It's a scary world out on the interwebs. There are people, bad people everywhere, who are trying to get access to your systems, to your data. Then in a company, people wanna get into those systems. A lot of the time, people will go and try to attack a company because somebody in that business or you yourself have been a little unsafe online. You've clicked on something that you shouldn't have. You received maybe a phishing attack. Maybe you got some malware installed onto your computer without you knowing. So let's talk a little bit about how to stay safe online. You know, sometimes a bit challenging to deploy your own servers. You know, if you're gonna build some physical boxes, you need to build a virtual machine, there's a whole lot of config. You need some physical tech available. Wouldn't it be great if you could actually build your own dedicated server directly on the cloud? And that's exactly what you can do with Liquid Web. They're an awesome hosting provider that not only lets you use VMware and build your own websites, but you can also have your own dedicated server, your own dedicated flavor of whatever OS that you like. So whether you want this for your own learning, whether you want to do this in a production environment, in a company, you don't have to go to these big boys like your AWS and your Azure. You can actually do this with Liquid Web. Get your own dedicated server. Link down below in the video description. Check them out. You know, every single day you're hearing more and more and more of people that have been victim of cyber attacks. Companies being victim, you being victim, your friends, your family getting impacted because somebody's gone in and stolen their data stolen something from them, and that's not good. We all need passwords. To log into absolutely every single thing, you should at least have a password. You should at least have a complex password, a strong password, a password that is made up of uppercase, lowercase, has a special character, has a number, is not a simple word. You know, a lot of hackers, they use these things called dictionary attacks. And sometimes what they'll do is if they're gonna try to log in and hack into a website, they're gonna try a whole bunch of basic passwords first out of this dictionary list that they know are common passwords. And hopefully yours isn't on there. Hopefully you're not using passwords such as admin or password or password one, two, three. Don't use those sort of passwords. So make sure that your passwords are complex. But additional to that, making sure that every single service, every single website that you need to log into is using a different password. Don't use the same password across multiple websites. Because the last thing that you wanna happen is for one of those websites to get compromised, and you're hearing about this more and more every single day, a website is compromised, the database is open, lost, stolen, and then everybody's got access to all the passwords that were in that list, including your password. The last thing that you want is for that password to also have been used on this account, and then on this account, because then the hackers now have your username and your password, and they could log into your other services as well. Have different passwords for every single one of your services. On the password front, do not save your passwords on your web browser. When you've just logged into Facebook and it says, would you like me to save your password for next time? And you go, that's really convenient. It's so nice that it's asking me so I don't have to remember next time. Don't do it. Don't save your web browsing history on your computer. Don't do it. Use something like a password manager. Password managers are great to store, manage your passwords. So combinations of having good, strong passwords, not saving the passwords, and using a password manager to copy and paste the passwords when you need them is really, really important. And attached onto that is using multi-factor authentication, using MFA on every single account where you can. MFA, of course, being a second form of authentication. So that when you log into something, it doesn't just require your username and your password, but it'll also send you a code, perhaps to your phone, perhaps an authenticator app, and then you have to throw in this code on top of your password to log in. So have good passwords and then also have good MFA in place. Whatever browser you're using, make sure that it's kept up to date. Whatever service you're using to log into the internet in any way, if you're using an FTP or an SFTP, you're using a web browser, you're using something else to access something that is internet related, make sure that your software is up to date, making sure that any vulnerabilities have been addressed. Because at the end of the day, companies like Microsoft, like Google, like Apple, they release security updates for good reason. There's been an identified vulnerability. There's a hole in the software that needs to be addressed. So you need to make sure that you're running the latest and greatest software available because it's gonna ensure that you are a little bit more safe when you are online. Phishing attacks are bad. Somebody actively phishing, trying to get access to some services. You're gonna be receiving potentially fake emails, fake calls, fake SMSs for you to do something. 
They're not real. They want you to trigger something to then install malicious software onto your phone, onto your computer. So don't do that. When you're online and you're on a website, don't click on something that looks a little bit suspicious. I always recommend to err on the side of caution. If it looks suspicious, it probably is, it may not be, but always err on the side of caution and look into it again. Look at the email address of the incoming email. Do you recognize it? Look at the web address of the website that you're visiting. Does it look legitimate or does it look a little bit suspect? Don't click on things that look sus. Don't click on attachments of emails that look sus or they are from somebody who you don't know. Now, if the worst should happen and you do get something installed onto your computer or something's trying to install itself onto your computer or you click on something that you shouldn't, make sure that you are running some good endpoint protection software, good antivirus, good malware protection software directly on your computer to ensure that if something should happen and should come in, that piece of software detects it and then clears it out, quarantines it, alerts you that something has been found and then you've got one less thing to worry about. Don't you love pop-ups? No, that's a joke question. Nobody likes pop-ups. Pop-ups coming up all over the place. Don't click on pop-ups should they pop up. But further to that, whatever browser you're using, use a pop-up blocker. Use a blocker that is actually protecting you from even getting those pop-ups in the first place. Together with a pop-up blocker is an ad blocker, making sure that the browser, whatever software that you are using when you're on the internet, not only blocks pop-ups, but any form of ads, anything that looks like, hey, I'm trying to sell you something, is also removed and blocked altogether. So it doesn't even get to you. You need to get a VPN. VPN is one of those things that is like essential to ensure that you are secure when you are online. VPN, of course, encrypts your connection. You're going to have a connection that is a lot more safe and a lot more secure and a lot harder for people to be able to snoop and it gives you a lot more privacy. You need to get yourself a VPN. A VPN that I love, a VPN that I use all the time is NordVPN. Yes, there's a whole bunch of free ones out there, but the free ones honestly are not very good they're not reliable, they throttle your connections and you get actually worse performance sometimes from some of these freebies. And I don't recommend them at all. So NordVPN, you gotta go get it and they've got a deal right now for my viewers where you get a bonus three months of NordVPN and a discount if you sign up for two years, 63% off, which is awesome. So you gotta go get NordVPN. Check out the link down below if you need to use private browsing or incognito mode on the browser as well. If you're doing that, then you're gonna ensure that your traffic is secured that little bit more. You know, when you're actually opening up a browser, a web browser, and you're surfing to a website, that website can track, they can see a lot of information about the web traffic, the browser type, the version of operating system. If you're running Windows, a Mac, a Linux, it'll know all of this information. Using incognito mode secures that a little bit, hides your connection a little bit, so that when you're surfing on the internet, it's like you're putting a mask on and you're a little bit more protected. And look, you don't have to use it all the time because it can get frustrating from time to time, but definitely if you're gonna be accessing maybe banking, if you're wanting to log into any sort of sensitive information, use incognito mode or private browsing. You know, the browsers have these things called plugins, extensions. For the most part, they sometimes they can be really, really helpful because they essentially will add a little bit of code, a little bit of extra features or software to a browser to allow you to do something that generally the browser wouldn't do out of the box. But at the same time, if you don't need plugins, if you don't need extensions on a browser, turn them off. Don't use them because they can be used for tracking your browser history, your IP address and other sensitive stuff. So don't use plugins, don't install plugins, don't install extensions unless you really, really have to. Now, one thing that I know is sometimes difficult to avoid, but it's limiting you using your personal information, your personal documentation online where you can. I mean, sometimes you have to fill out forms. You have to put in your details on there. Sometimes you have to provide your driver's license, your passport. I get it, you can't avoid that sort of stuff. You know, using things like a VPN and other things that we've talked about before are gonna be very important, but try to limit you providing personal information where you can. Similar to what I said before, when passwords get lost or stolen due to a data breach, the last thing that you want is for a data breach to happen 
and then the bad people now have got a copy of your private information. I mean, imagine if a telecommunications company that you have got a smartphone with, you've got their, your iPhone is hooked up with them. Great. To set it up, you have to provide other details, your name, your date of birth, your address, perhaps a security question that you've reused somewhere else, security question and answer. Don't reuse those as well, a little bonus tip there. But now somebody has hacked in to this telco. They've got access to the database and you're hearing about these data breaches all the time. And then that data is stolen. Now somebody has a copy of all of your personal info and they have a copy of a driver's license. With that, they could impersonate you. They could actually use that information to go and open up a bank account, to go and do something really dodgy. Be very careful. As I said, look, you can't limit it, but if you're gonna do it, make sure that you're inputting the details into a trusted site, a trusted service that you know about, but try to limit it if you can. I love tech, my name's Emilio. If you love tech, stay tuned for the next video. We talk about a lot of things tech on this channel, so stay tuned and we'll see you on the next video. See you later.